Hello friends, this video on microbes in human welfare part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So let us look at some of the questions. Question number one. Give examples to prove that microbes release gases during metabolism. So how do we know that microorganisms when undergoing the metabolic processes will release gases? So one common example is bacteria which release carbon dioxide which make the dough for idli or dosa fluffy. So you would have seen the puffed appearance of the dough when the dough is left for fermentation for quite some time. So what happens? That's, that puffy, puffiness comes due to the release of carbon dioxide. So this proves that bacteria release carbon dioxide. So which bacteria is involved here? The lactic acid bacteria. Again, fermentation of yeast release CO2 that is carbon dioxide which makes it a, a very useful agent, raising agent in bakery. So for any bakery items, whether it is cake or it is bread, so there also we see that once the dough is prepared, yeast undergoes the process of fermentation wherein carbon dioxide is released and due to the formation of carbon dioxide it rises so the it, it acts as the rising agent and later when it is baked what happens is as a result the yeast dies and uh, it the cake turns out to be soft and spongy question number two in which food would you find lactic acid bacteria? Mention some of their useful applications. So as we all know, the name itself tells it for itself. So lactic acid bacteria is a group of bacteria and these bacteria are found in curd. So the type of lactic acid bacteria which is very commonly found in curd is lactobacillus. Some of the useful applications are it helps in the process of curdling of milk. So if you add a small teaspoon of uh, curd to milk, what happens is and if you allow it to, if you leave it without disturbing for quite some time, what happens is the lactobacillus present in the curd, it will undergo the process of fermentation due to which lactic acid will be produced and due to the formation of lactic acid, the coagulation of proteins takes place and milk gets converted into curd. It also helps in pickling of vegetables, in wine making, so everywhere you see lactic acid bacteria play a similar role. It prevents growth of disease causing microbes in human stomach. So even inside the human stomach and that is why you would have seen that when you when we eat curd, we are actually allowing the lactic acid bacteria to ins enter inside our body. But this bacteria is not going to harm us, instead it is going to help us. How is it going to help us? By preventing the growth of disease causing microbes in the stomach. Question number four. In which way have microbes played a major role in controlling diseases caused by harmful bacteria? Now one of the major contribution of the microbe is the preparation of antibiotics because antibiotics are those medicines which can actually treat the bacterial infectious diseases. So any disease caused by bacteria can be treated with antibiotics and these antibiotics are prepared with the help of microbes. Now some of the examples of antibiotics are the first one to be discovered was penicillin by Alexander Fleming. Other antibiotics like streptomycin, tetracycline are other popular examples. So penicillin, now all of their names are derived from the uh, particular microbe from which they, with the help of which they are being prepared. For example, penicillin is named after the mold penicillium notatum from which it was uh, prepared for the first time. Question number five. Name any two species of fungus which are used in the production of antibiotics. Now as I said, antibiotics, they are prepared from microbes and they kill disease causing microbes. Now, some examples are, one is penicillium notatum. So this is, this was a mold and mold falls under the group of fungi. The other example is Cephalosporium acrimonium and it prepares, it helps in the preparation of the antibiotic Cephalosporin. So this is also a fungus. So these are the two fungi which help in the production of antibiotics. Question number six. What is sewage? 
in which way can sewage be harmful to us now as i mentioned before also sewage is the waste water now this waste water contains both solid as well as liquid wastes and since it is completely unhealthy for us because it can give rise to several diseases it can pollute the drinking water it can cause water pollution so therefore it needs to be removed from a community for healthy living now some of the harmful effects are contaminated drinking water so if you drink contaminated water you you are more prone to diseases like typhoid cholera several water borne diseases again whenever you your body gets some sort of contamination so there are many diseases which are water borne so you tend to catch those diseases environmental pollution now when there is environmental pollution it can affect you in a number of ways question number 7 what is the key difference between primary and secondary sewage treatment now we saw the entire process of sewage treatment the main purpose of sewage treatment is to make the sewage less harmful or to reduce the polluting potential of the sewage now primary sewage is the first stage which is followed by secondary sewage treatment so primary treatment is a mechanical process where the solid particles are mechanically or physically removed from the sewage where a secondary treatment is a biological process where microorganisms are involved which undergo the process of anaerobic respiration and that is how it tends to remove the unwanted organic matter so in primary treatment solid wastes are removed and there is no involvement of microbes but in the secondary treatment microbes are involved in order to remove the organic wastes and which microbes are involved mostly methanogens are involved primary treatment is less expensive because here mostly the uh, process is done by normal filtration or sedimentation process which are very less expensive but secondary treatment needs a proper apparatus you need the, the uh, aeration tank the settling tank and you need the entire setup as it is and that is going to cost you quite a bit so it is more expensive when compared to the primary treatment question number 8 three water samples namely river water untreated sewage water and secondary effluent discharged from a sewage treatment plant were subjected to bod test so what was bod bod was biochemical oxygen demand the samples were labeled a b and c so three samples were collected so one sample had river water another sample had untreated sewage water so this is going to be the most dirty the, the dirtiest one and the third sample contained the secondary effluent so secondary effluent is going to be a little better because it has undergone the primary sewage treatment and it has also undergone the secondary sewage treatment so after that whatever you get that is going to be the secondary effluent so these were the three samples now the laboratory attendant did not note which was which so the bod values which were obtained were 20 mg per liter 8 mg per liter and 400 mg per liter so this is these are the values of bod so if you look at the values of bod that is biochemical oxygen demand what do you see the three samples have three values 28 and 400 which sample of the water is most polluted can you assign the correct level to each assuming the river water is relatively clean now the question is trying to say that river water is the cleanest that means river water is going to have minimum amount of unwanted material and just by our own knowledge we can say this is going to be the dirtiest that is the untreated sewage water right okay so now how is the value of bod related to the polluting potential of water now greater the value of bod so greater the value of bod greater is the polluting potential of the water so that was the concept right because the if the quantity of organic wastes in the water is more that means the number of decomposing bacteria will also be more now if the number of bacteria is more 
that is the aerobic organisms is more they will need more oxygen so when they need more oxygen then the demand of oxygen will be more so BOD will be more so greater value of BOD means greater polluting potential that means the water has more potential to cause pollution so that means greater value of BOD would mean actually the dirtiest water because the dirtiest water will have the maximum potential to cause pollution so in this case which has the greater value of BOD so this has the greater value of BOD so 20 is going to be I mean, which has the maximum value of BOD I'm sorry 400 is the maximum value of BOD so that means 400 is going to correspond to the dirtiest water so here which is the dirtiest untreated sewage water so untreated sewage water is going to be the dirtiest next is 20 so 20 is going to be the secondary effluent so if you see this is how the value of BOD reduces on sewage treatment because when it undergoes passes through the primary treatment secondary treatment a lot of uh, dirt is removed out so secondary effluent is this and the slowest value of BOD is going to be the one which is the cleanest so that is going to be the river water right so now you can say which one is a which one is b and which one is c because here it is said that a has 20 so that means secondary effluent is going to be a b has 8 so river water is going to be b and c has 400 so the untreated sewage sample is going to be c so this is how we can determine that which uh, sample is more clean and which sample is more dirty question number 9 Find out the name of the microbes from which cyclosporin A, an immunosuppressive drug, and statins, blood cholesterol lowering agents, are obtained. So we have to name which microbes will produce these medicines. So cyclosporin A is derived from Trichoderma colosporum, and statins are derived from Monascus purpureus. So these are the like it, it is not possible for you to remember the names of all the microbes which produce all different types of medicines but since this was there in the question so I just answered it so so these are the microbes now different types of microbes will give rise to different types of antibiotics different types of medicines different types of enzymes question number 10 arrange the following in the descending order most important first of their importance for the welfare of human society give reasons for your answer and the four options are biogas, citric acid, penicillin and curd. So out of these four, which one do you think is the most important for the welfare of the human society? Now curd is just a food item which provides us some nutrition. So it, this is not of that great importance. Penicillin is a medicine. It is an antibiotic which can treat the bacterial diseases. So this is of quite good significance citric acid again is an acid which can be used as a food preservative right so curd is just a food item if you talk about penicillin it is an antibiotic and therefore it can treat many diseases so it is quite significant citric acid what is it it can be used as a food preservative and that's how it can help us to preserve food materials over a longer period of time so this is also important but less important than penicillin because penicillin is going to treat diseases it is going to save lives of people biogas again is a renewable source of energy which doesn't cause pollution and it is a renewable source of energy so obviously this is also a good option. Now, what do you think out of biogas and penicillin, which is more important? Yes, of course, penicillin is going to be more important because it saves lives of people. So penicillin is going to be the most important than biogas because it is a renewable source of energy and then citric acid because it acts as a food preservative and finally curd which just acts as a food item which is rich in vitamin B12. So this is how we can arrange it uh, in the order of their importance for the welfare of human society. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope that this lesson uh, on microbes and human welfare would have helped you. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, 
ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.